What's up guys? This is Boot Banter back at you with another video. Today I have a review of the New Balance 442 V2 Pro. And as you can see, I have two colorways. I have um, the first limited edition gold all kangaroo colorway. And then I also have another limited edition of the Beyond Orbit pack. This one is also kangaroo, full kangaroo leather um, through the whole boot. And the reason why I bought two of the same boots because I really like it and they really fit my feet well. This is a uh, wider boot and I do have wide feet so you know it all works out. So to give you guys this, the tight specs of the boot, we have um, kangaroo leather from the forefoot all the way to uh, the midfoot. I think this panel right here is um kangaroo leather but for the most part you have a synthetic heel right here you have um a nice insole it's it doesn't have um new balance infinite grip on it which i wish it did i wish it that it did but it's still a okay uh insole you have a synthetic tongue with uh a little bit of padding on it let me see if i'll show you guys better there you go. Yeah, a little bit of slight padding right here. Not too bad. And you have a nylon sole plate. Excuse the dirt on it. And just to show off the uh, the gold pair that I really like. And let's start with the upper. As I already said, um, pretty soft and um pretty wide as well basically i want to say it took me like one session to break these in um one training session because like i said very soft material is very wide so you won't have any problem breaking these in um as far as the actual leather quality they are nowhere near as soft as like um a mizuno made in japan um boot but that's all right because i will say that it's still on par with the other um brands like adidas nike and puma as far as um their leather goes so if you're thinking like oh man they're not gonna be that good they are they're pretty good they're not you know top tier they're not like an adler or um like i said a mizuno made in japan but it's okay. You'll 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 be satisfied with these, as long as they fit your feet. You're gonna like them. Um, speaking to the the weight of the boot, with it being a nylon sole plate, the weight is pretty nice. I'm talking like maybe I know they're around like the seven ounce mark. Um, you know, depending on your size, but they feel pretty light in here, which I was really happy about because for it to be um, basically a full kangaroo leather boot and it still be um, pretty light like like sub eight ounces and you still have you know a, a substantial insole and substantial heel liner and it feels like a sturdy boot that's pretty good so I give them top marks for um, you know not skimping out of materials and still making the boot you know relatively light um one gripe that i have with the um with the boots is the heel now for some reason um new balance decided to have like um a suede heel liner but as you can see in the red sorry about the lighting but you see these like red pods these pods do not do anything as far as um, securing your, your heel. If there was one downfall to this boot, the downfall will be that it is not the, the, the heel liner lacks lockdown. For one, I think they made the heel a little bit too wide. It's not super wide where your heel is slipping out of the boot, but it could definitely be narrowed just a, a slight bit to make the heel, make the lockdown um, a bit more secure and also if I can make a request new balance please get rid of the 
like the the little section pods that are in the the hill because they do nothing um for lockdown and to be honest i think they're contributing to you know other people's reviews saying that um they've been getting blisters in these because the the suede on here is pretty nice but the actual pods they have no type of grip on them whatsoever and they do nothing to, to to hold the heel down so if you could if you could just tighten up the heel and make this a full suede uh heel liner without the pods i think that would go a long way in adding to the the lockdown of the boot as you can see if you look at my laces how they're do i have it on this one um Pretty much, I have to use the, the second lace hole, and I think on, as you can see right here, right, I have to loop my laces to do the runner's loop to try and accommodate for the lack of heel lockdown in the boot. So, if there was one thing I could um, take away from the boot, or if there's one negative to the boot, it's definitely the heel. So, new balance, when you guys are making the... 442 v3 you know please keep that in mind that um a lot of people including myself you know have had gripes about you know the heel liner everything else is, is pretty good i mean if i had to put you know rate this on a number scale you know the um the leather i would give it you know an 8 out of 10 um kangaroo leather Still better than the calf leather that Adidas and others are using now because, you know, they're afraid of um, making lobbyists and everything else mad about using kangaroo leather. So if there was one um, tip I would give to New Balance is keep using K-leather until um, it is actually outlawed, you know, entirely. I would say keep going for it because you are a smaller brand and... No matter what people say, kangaroo leather is um, essential, you know, for the football, you know, football boot com community. So for you guys, if you guys keep using K-leather, it actually helps, you know, um, helps bring more customers to your brand for the soccer division because um, the other brands, they're not, they're afraid of using it. So that'd be one thing to, to help you know, draw people into your brand. Um, like I said, touch, pretty good. Um, 9 out of 10. Um, weight, 9 out of 10. Lockdown, 7 out of 10. Comfort, um, I would say 8.5. You know, the reason why it's not a 9 or a 10 is because, like I said about the heel, I'm not going to keep going on about it, but, you know, just to really, you know, drive that home is that the biggest... The biggest negative of this boot is the heel. But, um, yeah, everything is, is pretty nice about this boot. Um, if there's one thing I would say is maybe the tongue does slide a little bit. And there are a few ways that, you know, this isn't just um, on a New Balance boot, but it's for multiple boots, you know. When you have a traditional um, tongue like this, you know, with the, with the traditional construction, you're going to have a little bit of tongue slipping. And there's a few ways to counteract this. So for one, you could have this traditional tongue, right? But the first few um, lace holes, you will actually stitch to the, to the, to the tongue so that the, the top can move around but the bottom stays and that will help for the tongue not to to shift from side to side during play so that be one alternative one solution another solution is just to have the stitching or to to stitch the tongue go all the way until you get to the last two lace loops lace holes you know like how um, other brands used to um, they would call it a, like a tongueless construction, pretty much. Um, 
another way for you to um, counteract the, the tongue sliding is to actually put, you know, stitch, put a small little band on one side of the tongue and attach that band into the basically the the shovel board of the um, of the boot that way you still have a free construction um but with that with that band being attached to the tongue it actually would um help mitigate the problem of the tongue sliding so you know those are or you could even make this a um just make it a knit tongue but I will say, if you're going to make this a knit tongue, please make sure that you make the knit a bit thicker. That way, when you do that, the um, the laces actually don't create lace bite when you do that. So if you're going to make a knit, a knit tongue, just make it like a medium thickness. That way, you know, players won't have lace bite when they're um, lacing up tightly. Um, what else? Oh, um... If I didn't say it before, um, I really appreciate the um, the lace loops. Well, I would say I appreciate the second lace hole, the extra lace hole. I wish more brands would do this because, you know, as soccer players, we really look for that that one to one, um, you know, feeling that 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 one to one like lockdown, which means that when you move. The boot moves simultaneously with you. You don't have any heel slip. You don't have any forefoot slip. And a big way to kind of help with that is to add that second lace hole. Because more often than not, you know, players are going to use that second lace hole to get more um, lockdown. So please keep that, you know, going into the second or the third generation of the um, 442. Yeah, um... That's pretty much it. If I had to um, give this boot, you know, kind of a a four rating, I would say I would give it like a eight point five out of ten. Um, you know, the studs. I actually like the length of the studs. The stud length is good for, you know, multiple surfaces. One, it's all conicals, so I'm grateful for that. And the actual length makes it so that. If you had to use these on AG, which I don't think they've they've said, but you know a lot of people don't like using AG studs because they're too small and they don't give you enough bite. So if you had to use these on AG, you should be okay because they're not super long and they're conical. So um, whatever, um, I guess whatever generation, you know, the, the third generation of the four four two, keep this so plate. A lot of brands, they mess up because they say, oh, we have to make everything brand new from the sole plate to the upper, and that's not the case. You see how, um, say, for instance, Adidas keeps using the, the Nemesis sole plate because it's lightweight and um, it's it's semi-conical, which means you can use it for a lot of services. This is you guys' you know, main sole plate. It's light, and it's safe on multiple surfaces because it's conical, and basically nobody can really give a big, you know, any complaints about it. So please keep this for the next, you know, generation of 442. And, um, yeah, I would give this, like I said, 8.5 out of 10. Um, if I had a request, before you guys create the, the 442 V3, I would ask that maybe we could get another full kangaroo leather um, special edition of the 442 V2. Um, preferably like a white and metallic silver or like a white and gold. That would be really, really cool to kind of, you know, close out the end of this, of this, uh, this generation. And then for the um, 442 V3, just go ahead and... and just do small improvements. Just make that heel a really nice suede heel liner with no pods in it. And, um, you know, make sure the the tongue doesn't slide around. And then you guys have a winner. You know, you don't have to, you know, rewrite, you know, recreate the wheel for the next one. You guys already have, you know, a great boot. 
you guys only need to do a little bit of adjustments and to make it a fantastic boot. So that's pretty much my review for the New Balance 442 V2 Pro. You know, if you can find these for a decent price, you know, whatever that price is for you, you know, get your sizing right. Oh, you know what? I will say this. The sizing is kind of messed up on these. I'm usually a 10 and a half in most boots. And for the um, 442, I actually went up to a size, um, a half a size up. So if you're looking for these, um, if you can find them in store, what I would say is because these are limited edition, right? So that means that most um, most soccer stores, most football stores, they're not gonna have them in in um, in store. So what I would do is try on the the um, you know the general the regular edition of four four two because it's the same sizing. If whatever size you can get, um, like whatever size you try on in the regular colorways, that is the size I would get for, you know, if you try and look for the, the limited editions. So for me, this is a boot where I had to go a half size up. I'm usually a 10 and a half US. And for these, I had to go to a size 11. And that's that's with me with having little, you know, little um, space in the toe. But you have to remember, I am a wide footer. So if you have really narrow feet, like uh, 7 MOC or J Mike from Unisport, if you have thin feet like them, then perhaps you could, you could get away with going true to size. But anybody with um, medium to wide feet, I would strongly suggest um, going half a size up. That's pretty much it for my review. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace.